Hi everybody, my name is Maxim Coquerel and thank you very much for this introduction. I'm, I'm very happy to share this talk uh, today with you. And today we speak about uh, cloud security. Uh, we speak about an overview of what is cloud security. I'm director of cloud security and cloud security architect at RBC. I'm also a Microsoft MVP on Azure technology. Microsoft MVP is a Microsoft program for people engaged with the community, and we provide feedback to the Microsoft engineering team. We create blog posts, and uh, we deliver talk or conference uh, by example. And uh, when uh, I have a technical background in cloud security, my focus is on uh, Azure and AWS. And before that, I have worked in different area. I have worked in aerospace and defense. Uh, industry for the for the French government, and I have also worked for medical industry uh, in Quebec City. Okay, quick disclaimer before to start: uh, every opinion expressed is in presentation is only my opinion; is not the opinion of RBC or, or opinion of uh, the ownership, the management, or the employee of RBC. It's only my opinion. Okay, now let's go. The agenda for this talk is a quick reminder on the cloud model. After that, we speak about a cloud uh, security responsibility model. We, we go deep uh, with an example of cloud security journey of a cloud application. Uh, and we, we go to the different sub-subjects, uh, such as cloud security architecture design, cloud regulation, threat modeling. And for each of these topics, I provide security recommendation and best practice. During this presentation, when I speak about cloud, I speak only about public cloud, not, uh, not private cloud. For example, you can know private cloud such as uh, Hyper-V, VMware, OpenStack, and all the on-premise virtualization stuff. On the market, we can discover four models. The first model is a traditional IT. The second model is infrastructure as a service, or YAS. And the second model is a platform as a service, PaaS, and software as a service. I see maybe you have, uh, you, have, uh, you, have, you have already seen this slide, but I would like to take time to, to onboard every people in this room uh, at the same level. Traditional IT, I think you know this model. You manage all the stack, all the layer of the stack from networking to application. This, you, 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 can, be, you can be find this model on your on-premise data center, on your on-premise deployment, for example. This model is based, on, is based on a CapEx model. You need to purchase all the components and you need to manage all the security layer. The first cloud public model is a YAS, is infrastructure as a service. This model is a full service model. You purchase compute, network, storage, and for example, with this model, you can create a virtual machine, for example, inside Azure, inside the Azure platform, and you can extend on demand the capacity of this virtual machine. Or you can extend, for example, if you want more storage, if you want more CPU, more compute uh, resource. But from, a cloud, but from a cloud security perspective, with this model, you need to manage all, all the layer. Uh, sorry, with this model, you need to manage the operating system layer, the middleware layer, the runtime uh, layer, the data and the application layer. This is on your responsibility. The second cloud model is a PaaS, or platform as a service. With this model, you manage only two layers. You manage only the application and the data. And for, exam for an example of, uh, of a PaaS services, for example, if you use Azure, if you want to have a uh, database on demand, you can use Azure SQL. And this Azure SQL is a managed services. It's a, it's a PaaS services. You need to only um, manage the application part and the data part. And all the other part is managed by the cloud provider and is not under your responsibility. And this is very important to understand 
what's your responsibility, what's the responsibility of the cloud provider. The last cloud model is a SaaS model, or software as a service. With this model, you manage nothing. You purchase only a subscription from the service. For example, I think you, you use this model every, every day because this model f is a model for when you use GoToMeeting, when you use Dropbox, when you use Google Drive, you use this model, it's a SaaS model. If it's good for everybody, and in the next slide, I present for me the main piece of the security, of the cloud security. This piece is a cloud security chair security responsibility model. This model defines which part is under your responsibility and which other part is under the cloud provider responsibility model. Each aspect of this responsibility model depends on which model you choose before. If you choose a YAS, if you choose a PaaS, or if you choose a SaaS, it's not the same scope. And from a security perspective, you do not manage the same scope. For example, with a YAS, the cloud security service provider is responsible for the core infrastructure security. He manages the storage part, he manages the networking part, and he manages the compute part. When I, when I, when I say he manages the compute part, for example, he manages the hypervisor part, and he is responsible to, to, to deploy the security update on the hypervisor part. This is not under your responsibility. And it's, it's, very, it's very important when you, design a when you design a cloud security architecture or when you speak with a different department, for example, when you speak with a legal department to understand what is under the scope and which is not under the scope. I, I, I can tell you an example of my previous life. Um, in my previous life, uh, I, I have worked in medical industry and we have uh, we have, uh, we have agreements uh, with a cloud provider because we have compliance with IPA. IPA is a cloud regulation for, for the personal information of, um, also of the L, L data of a US uh, citizen. And to, to manage that, we, we define a, a BAA. A BAA is an agreement between you and your cloud provider. And inside this agreement, you need to define What's, what is under your scope and what is under the cloud provider scope. And for example, if a customer moves from a YAS to PaaS and at the end to the SaaS, the customer becomes the, the, the responsibility of the customer is, is less because you transfer the responsibility to the cloud provider. Okay, now we can go more deep with the cloud security journey of a cloud application. The goal with this slide, I would like to discuss with you and I would like to present with you, when you go to the cloud and when you onboard your cloud security team to, to move your application to the cloud, you have three main ways. The first main way, I think for me it's a, it's an easy way is to redevelop from scratch all your application using managed services provided by a cloud provider. But if you do that, you if you do that, you recreate the application from scratch and you need to invest a lot of time and a lot of money to do that. The second way is to create an hybrid deployment. For example, you deploy your front end of your application in the cloud, and you have the backend and the database part on, on, uh, in, inside your, your on-prem data center. And you, you deploy a dedicated link between your cloud, between your cloud and uh, your data center. For example, with Azure technology, we have uh, dedicated links such as uh, Express Route, for example. And the last, and the last point, and I think for me, it's a point and it's a last way. I think this way is used by a by lot of company is to, to do a lift and shift. To do a lift and shift, you take your on-prem application 
and you move this application in first time in the cloud. And for example, if your application run on-prem on different VM, you, you need to discover what the, what the footprint of this VM, you need to map, to map you need to map the different VM, you need to map the network, you need to map all the dependency, all the third party used by, the appli by this application. And when you have done this exercise, you can say, okay, now I can move my application. But before to move this application, you need to determine, you, you need to define which cloud, which type of cloud do you want to use. If you want to use a YAS model, if you want to use a PaaS model, if you want to use a SaaS model. And after that, you can build a strategy migration plan. But you need to, you need to follow this, this five step because for my personal security recommendation, this is mandatory because you need to map all the dependency, you need to map all the third party and to understand what third party can be impact your application before to move. Now we can go deep. We choose to move an application to the cloud. And now we can, with this slide, I would like to share with you a few security recommendations when you design a cloud security architecture for an application. When you do a, a lift and shift, you move your machine virtual, you need to, to move your storage, you move all these parts. But the, the, the first goal of the cloud is to, is to use manage services because when you use a managed services you limit your responsibility you transfer a part of, of this responsibility to the cloud provider and you can use you can use dedicated service for example you have dedicated service to store your secret to store your certificate you need you you, you can use, for example this service in the case of this slide uh, is Azure Key Vault. You can use uh, Azure Security Center to detect which thread uh, can be impact your application. <coughs> this is very important because when you design this architecture, you do not need to follow the same, uh, it's, it's another mindset. It's two other mindset because on-prem and cloud is very different. And when you design that, you need to, to understand which service I can use. For example, if you, if you need to, if, if, you, if you have, a, if you need to, to use a database, you, you do not deploy a new virtual machine with a database. You can be, you, you, can, you can analyze which services is available to create and manage database. Because with that, you reduce the scope of your security responsibility. For example, I, I can provide another example. I recommend to use, for example, if you need to use DNS, if you need to have a DNS services for your application. For my personal security recommendation is to use a managed service for that. For example, with Azure is Azure DNS or with AWS is Wood53. And this service is operate by the cloud provider. And another good point to think when you, when you want to move your application to the cloud is to think about which cloud regulation my application follow. For example, if you have on-prem and PCI DSS application, if you move this application to the cloud, you need to follow, uh, to follow the regulation. And we, we can see on the market a lot of people said, okay, but uh, my cloud provider is compliant with PCI DSS and I don't need to follow uh, this, this, reg this uh, regulation because my, my cloud provider follows this regulation. This is not true because when you use a cloud services, when you use a managed cloud services, it's under your responsibility to check if the cloud services is compliant is compliant with your your specific regulation, for example, PCI, because it's not all the services compliant, and you need to check if the service in the specific region, for example, Canada Central or Canada East, is compliant with this regulation. 
And that's my recommendation. When you design something, you need to check and you need to take time to check if the service is compliant or not, if it's compliant under the specific region or not. Another way to increase the level of security of your cloud deployment is to use a maturity model. A maturity model is this model on the screen. You have five steps. The first step is traditional deployment. You deploy your application on your on-prem data center. And for example, with this maturity model, you, you deliver one or two deployments per month. After that, you move to, a, to another model. So the model is continuous delivery. We increase the number of deployment because you increase the number of deployment two to, two to 10 deployments per month. And after that, you have, a, you, have a third, you have a third model, continuous delivery adoption, and you increase the number of the deployment. And at the end, you have intelligence deployment. You have more thousand deployments. You have more thousand deployment per month. It's crazy. We, but to achieve, this, to achieve this maturity model, you need to manage your software and all your infrastructure with code. And for that, we speak about immutable infrastructure. You need to script and you need to automate, to automat, to, to automate all the action, all your deployment. And this is very important because this is directly related to your security level. For example, if you, if you go to the intelligence deployment, you can, you, you can deploy uh, chaos engineering and you can deploy automatic dependency analysis. And you, we, we this, in, in this way, you limit the number of potential outage during the deployment because you deploy each day, you deploy, you depl you deploy uh, multiple times during the day, and this is very, very important. But if, if, we, if we take time to, to see the market, few startups, for example, startup, large startups such as Uber, Lyft, have the maturity, uh, Uber, Lyft, or, or Facebook, for example, have the intelligence deployment maturity level in place. Because it's very difficult, because you need to invest on your build system, you need to invest on your delivery system, and this is very, um, this, for, to achieve this level, you need to have a very good engineer, you need, to, you need to invest time to understand which dependency of my application and how I can automate all my deployment process. But if we see the market, we are under, Model two and model three now, but the goal is to to be uh, the goal is to have uh, intelligence deployment for that. And for that, on the market, you have different solutions for that. You can see, uh, you can check the solutions such as Spinnaker, for example, if you want to check after. But in conclusion for, for this slide, I, I would like just take a few seconds. In conclusion of this slide, it's important to remember you need to manage all your infrastructure code, all your infrastructure deployment with code. And you need to, to add this code in Git, you need to version this code because you need, you, you, you need, to, have, you, you need to have the capability to roll back and for that, and you need to to, to track which change is, which change is, is done or, or not. And for that, for that, you need to automate all the process. To achieve this maturity level, when I speak before, you need to have a very good pipeline. You need to have a very good CI, a continuous integration pipeline, and a CD, a continuous delivery pipeline. And you need to engage your security team from the beginning to the end of this pipeline. For example, with, with this slide, I present a pipeline with six stage. First stage, plan. At this, during the plan, during the plan stage, you need to you need to onboard your security guys to perform a security analysis, to uh, security analysis, and define a security testing plan. 
during the stage code, you can help your developer to prevent the security issue using linter, for example. During the build, another good thing to, to know is to, is to perform static application security testing. You have an engine, who, 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 and this engine inspects all your code, and you can find, for example, if, if you have inside your code, if you have a potential SQL injection, if you have, if you have something wrong. And after that, during the test part, you have a dynamic application security testing. But this, you have a dynamic application te security testing. You test uh, all your application. Uh, you test your application with a security scanner. For example, um, for example, you, for this part, you can use Burp. Burp Suite Pro can be uh, can be help you to perform a dynamic application security testing. And during the release uh, stage. I recommend to I recommend to 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 I recommend to find an external opinion and for that I recommend to engage a penetration testing team to check which potential vulnerability can be discovered in your application before to go in production. And for me for me, my recommendation for that is to have external opinion because your developer focus only on the deployment of the application, but to have an external opinion, you can discover some, you can discover new security issue. For example, you can check if you have a potential issue in your authentication system, if you have a misconfiguration of, uh, of a specific storage bucket, by example. Now take time to focus on the static code analysis. Quickly, with the static code analysis, you need to scan your code and you need to scan all the dependency of your code. Because if you have a clean code, yes, it's good. But if you use a third party, if you use an external library, for example, an OpenSSL library, and this library is not patched, but your application is vulnerable, and you can be have a very good security level. But if you if you use unpatch uh, vulnerability, uh, unpatch library vulnerable, unpatch library, uh, you fail and you you fail all the process. And this is very important to to check all the third party. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Another good thing is to deliver threat modeling. The goal of threat modeling is to identify in your application which part can be failed. And with this modeling, you model all the threat, you model all the risk, and with this, with this exercise, you can, you, can, you, can, uh, you can detect, for example, if your authentication system inside your application is not really good, and you can say, uh, to your developer guy to say, okay, now we need to invest time on this part because this part is a breakpoint of the application. And threat modeling can be helped to do that. And if you if you need help to 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 deliver a threat modeling exercise, you can use a uh, you can use a framework for that. For example, Microsoft deliver a very good framework, Stride. It can be help you uh, to to deliver a threat modeling a threat modeling exercise. Another slide about cloud compliance, because about cloud compliance control, because when you deploy your application uh, in the cloud, okay, you need to enforce the security check this application with control. And on the, uh, we have two main types of control. We have detective control and we have preventive control. And with detective control, you can detect if something is wrong or not, or preventive control. You you can uh, you can you you can use that for example to to check if you have uh, an authorized uh, user in your system for example this is very important to take time to define which control can be applied in your application another quickly uh, another chapter uh, I speak uh, few few seconds uh, on this topic. It's good to deploy your application in the cloud, but the other part is to monitor this application and to log all the, all the, 
all the action inside this application. And my recommendation for that is, is always remember where, you, uh, where your monitoring platform is based. Because if you deploy your monitoring platform in the same place, in the same cloud region of your application, if maybe the cloud region is done, you lost all. And another point, another good question, I think, is to remember is how long I need to keep my log. Because if you speak with your legal department, you have cloud, I, I'm sure at 100%, you have cloud, you have a specific regulation for that. You need to store your log one year, you, maybe you need to store, to store your log seven years. And for that, you need to speak with your, with your legal department to check in the contract with your customer which requirement is defined. And another slide about response to incidents. The good thing and the goal, I think, for every organization is to have response to incident with automated playbook. You need to define a plan. You need to define a strategy to respond to your incident. Because if you do not do that, when you have an incident, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for everybody. It's a nightmare for your customer. It's a nightmare for your technical, for your technical guy. It's a nightmare for the, for the executive. Because during an, during an incident, during a security incident, you have no time to define a plan. You need to follow an existing strategy. And when you follow this, exist when you follow this existing strategy, you need you need to have clear instruction at all the steps, and you need to have dedicated people for communication. And my experience in this, in, in this area, in this, uh, in this subject, about the communication. The communication is a crucial, it's, it's a crucial part. You need to have, from my personal recommendation, is to need to have an external guy, an external people from, this, from the, from the, from the team, to speak with a customer, to, to, to have only one communication way, not multi-way. Because if you have multi-way communication, you control nothing, and at the end, it's a nightmare. But when you define your plan, when you define which people can be engaged in this plan, in this strategy, you need to practice. And I think the key thing is to practice. You need to practice. Because if you do not practice your plan and your, and your strategy, when you have a critical incident, nobody is prepared for that. It's, it's the same thing if you have nothing. If you don't practice, it's the same thing to have nothing. And you need, and for, for the practice, for the fire drill, you need to engage the leadership of your company. This is very important to have the support of, of, the, of your leadership. But to achieve all this security recommendation, all the best practice I, I, has, I ever sp spoke before, to start, to, start, to start a new cloud security project, I recommend to follow the CMMM v3. It's a cloud control matrix provided by the Cloud Security Alliance. In this Cloud Security Alliance, you have uh, you have, uh, if I remember, you have 16 sub uh, control domain, and for each domain, each area, you have a specific control. And from that, from this control, you can create your own control. You, you can create your own security control to check if your security application has a good maturity level in, in terms of security or not. And this is, this is very good because it's a fund. With, with, with this part, with this control, you can, you can define a, funda a foundation uh, of, in terms of, of security. I would like to conclude this presentation with the SDLC pipeline because cloud security, cloud security journey is a long road. And to, to follow this long, maybe you, you must never lost hope. You can achieve, you can achieve that. Uh, but only step after step. It's small action after small action after small action. And at the end of, at the end of that, you have a good result. But you need, to, you, need to, you need to take time and you need to, to invest in your people because I think the key thing of all this presentation is your people. Because if you don't invest in terms of formation, in terms of training, in terms of, uh, of uh, practice, 
and if you do not uh, invest in your people, you, ca you can achieve a good result because the, the main component of, of all the security, of all the security, pe all, all the cloud security is your people. Thank you very much for your attention.